Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. Okay, that was Twitch doing that for sure. Okay. All right, guys, we are going to have a little bit of a slow start just because <clears throat> first. First stream I don't know but on the new unit here, so I'm just trying to get all dialed in. Um all dialed in. Um all dialed in. Bear with me, guys. Not only are we implementing a new PC, but we're implementing a new mic. Okay, mic check, mic check. Did it. Okay, mic sounds good. There they are. There they are. Coming in now, I see it. Okay, so I'm going to hit record right now, and I'm going to go to the next screen here, and does this look better for you guys <clears throat> as far as, I know people were asking me about lining up the date with the, with the dollar, you know, just the X, Y axis, right? axis so uh, hopefully that looks better as well let's see here one last thing I'm gonna attempt to see if you guys can hear any music because I think this is the one thing I just, <clears throat> we definitely have not ever got. So let me know if you guys can hear music or not. I mean, I know I can, so. Any music? Yes, good, yes, is that music? Okay. Mike sounds money too. All right, that's what I wanted to hear. Okay, last thing is visuals. Nobody commented on visuals. And is the mic too loud? It's a little loud, okay. How about now, mic uh, music better? Good, BTC chart up. Cool. All right, guys, uh, watermarked it for you guys as well. <clears throat> so that when you're looking back, you guys can see uh, which chart we were on. For those of you guys that uh, obviously aren't live with us, some of you guys are going to watch the recording. Okay, so uh, confirmed. <laughs> no house music. <laughs> I just tried it. But I don't even actually listen to this, to be honest with you. <clears throat> it's something that's like uh, more of a recommendation for like the broader audience but yeah don i don't actually listen to house music personally um okay so let me zoom out here on the btc chart a bit all right it's kind of 
Okay, let's see. Okay, we're good. All right, guys. So, starting off with BTC. Um, okay, so in yellow we have this big cipher, right? We've been watching this sucker for, I mean, since the 25th, really since the 23rd, even before, since it was actually around 4,900, which was about right, yeah, about the 23rd, 22nd. And this is what basically triggered our entry, of course. <clears throat> Not only that, but it was the completion of the butterfly in blue that had played out, basically, right? So when, well, one was playing out, another was in full, full development. So, uh, House says he can't hear. He can't hear me or the music. I'm gonna keep moving forward though. <clears throat> All right. So, um, spaces, it's good. <clears throat> Sorry guys, I'm dying over here. I just actually blazed right before, that's why I could barely breathe. Okay guys, so we had these two harmonics that kind of, you know, did, <clears throat> did their thing at the same spot. All right, so now we also, zooming in a bit, had another harmonic right we have a shark that we're currently also watching uh x a b c d 886 and this is our box up here that we're after right because this area is a couple things right so you have the cipher in yellow so when the cipher completes as the butterfly previously completed, right? When a pattern finishes, it no longer becomes something we're kind of fighting per se. But anyways, <clears throat> so when we get up into these areas where you see these two green lines, the lower green line being at 61,800, basically that is the first take profit of the cipher which that hits the a from the the anchor point a of the cipher at 61.8 so at that point a lot of people in the cipher would start to be exiting the trade right and then when you get up to uh the second green line that's 64,800, basically 65k it's the previous all-time high from all, all this cluster up here where you had a couple uh, coinciding anchor points, right? So at that point, the cipher is going to be basically, you're going to be taking profit on the cipher. While at the same time, you have this shark that lands right in the middle of that zone, right? So if that shark reverses, in that gray box at the 886 okay that's basically the low point of of a cipher of a shark it can go higher it can go as high as the 113 okay so the 113 would be outside and a new all-time high but this is a different type of shark this is a because this shark sweeps everything it's it's stronger it's the one that morphs into the 50 but when you have this weaker shark that stays lower and it ends up putting in a lower high, it it doesn't always or as often morph as the higher shark. Does that make sense, guys? So when you get the when you get the more bullish of even though this is a bearish shark, we're looking for it to morph to a bullish 50, which is continuation to the upside, right? So in order to get that, you need this stronger shark because you need a small retrace to reset, it's fine. And that's how you get the push. But when you get the weaker bearish shark, this is stronger for a bear. It, it puts in the lower high, right? And this shark can do two things. When you get that larger one, you morph into the 5.0, it, it's continuation. It's, it's, like, it's like acting as, uh, like, it's acting like accumulation at resistance for continuation right <clears throat> but when you get this lower one this shark can act as a reversal pattern as harmonics often do right they're called harmonic reversal patterns when the harmonic hits the pattern or price reverses right 
harmonic reversal patterns. So it'll be bad if we only get this 886 because your large, large cipher in yellow that's as big as your face is going to be done, right? So you, you don't have that help anymore, in essence. And then you're going to be hitting a completion area of a bearish shark. So this could be a really dangerous area, guys. Like, like dangerous as in, I don't want to start saying like top, but like, you guys know, we're going to see some charts here, right? That are going to further this, this case. And we'll, we always swing back around to Bitcoin at the end. But guys, I mean, I don't even know where to begin with how many top signals are out there. You know what I mean? Every fucking buddy is talking about stocks and crypto and fucking doggy coin, right? So, like, it disgusts me. I'm, I hear it in the real everywhere. It, it doesn't matter where I've, I've been traveling around. Everybody's fucking talking about it. Every state. These people aren't traders. These people aren't investors that I'm running into. That are speak These are just retail. It's retail, guys. And they're talking like... Like... <sighs> yeah, exactly, right? So, that being said... We gotta watch the fuck out. At some point, this is... <clears throat> this is gonna... I mean... It can't, it's not just up only forever, guys. It just doesn't work that way, okay? If you guys weren't around in 2017, then, I mean, this will be year 2017. And then we'll talk about it in like 18 months and you'll be like, fuck, that hurt. I'll be like, yeah, it really did, didn't it? So, these, if, if this is aligns like this and it ends up being a lower high, that shark you end up painting like some massive massive head and shoulders or something right like boom boom whoops cloned the wrong one and boom what if you see what i'm saying guys what if it's like this we just got to be aware, okay? So what we really, really, really need to have happen in order for more up, and, and I think we can get it, okay? I think we can get it, but, but, <clears throat> look, here's what we need, okay? We have to invalidate. Mem we did this to ETH. We did this to them already. We, we said, oh, my head and shoulders, and then we said, nope. See ya, wham, right? So we we know it's possible. And it just, this is a critical, critical area. And it's not, for us, it's a pretty tight area considering the entire structure you're talking about, right? You're talking about all this price action back here. And we're just worried about this little small zone to give us the indication, right? So at least, at least we've dialed it in, right? And we know where to be cautious, right? So we need to see this breakout and paint the higher high. We need the highest, we need the new all-time high. And when when it happens though, you're going to get this 113, okay? So you're not going to you're going to get a higher high because the previous high was 65,000, okay? This will be like 66, it's like 666666, right? So you'll get a I don't know decently higher high but nothing crazy right and then you tank again no matter what you're gonna you're just gonna sweep the highs and then you're gonna nuke again but this is where we would get it find our edge right against the market again because we'd be looking for the morph right so we're gonna fib from the current swing low april 25th to what would be the new high okay that doesn't exist yet and we'd be looking for a 50% retracement. <clears throat> so this 50% retracement right here is the morph, okay? This is where the shark, 
bearish shark would morph into a bullish 5.0. We would be looking for price action, obviously to, oops, sorry, wrong one. Big old nasty little arrow. We don't want that guy. Let me get uh, a little paintbrush out. Okay. So whatever, you chop around right here a little bit, but you make your way up. You get into this zone and you hold this zone somehow. You paint maybe a head and shoulders in here and then you nuke it, right? Oh, and you get all the way up here. Here's where you paint the slightly higher high, bearish divergence. We finally fall back into the zone. Here's the real head and shoulders. And then we come down and we morph, okay? Here's where we want the double bottom. And then this is where we would send it, okay guys? Uh, from here to here, this is where we would look for, again, hidden bullish divergence. Um, it's going to be a nasty one like that. So that's that's our kick. That's our, if we see it and we get it and all that happens, we know the market's telling us something. Impending price action reversal to the upside. Okay. So step one it doesn't matter what happens on this low time frame chop okay this is bullshit chop even if it comes back to 54 1 doesn't matter it just you this is just chop on the way up okay so whatever happens in this little small area is i don't know we're in from way lower guys so this is choppy it just price action um yeah, I mean, you you can still run. Yes, you're starting to somewhat diverge, but this hasn't even started waning yet, so it, it might not be done. What if this engulfs it and it's just convergence, right? So it, it looks diverging, but it's not confirmed, okay? And RSI, yeah, you're reaching the top of, you know, kind of the range high of the RSI, right? But you still haven't really painted any significant divergence okay so um this could keep running guys and odds are it's gonna either way because even if this is top well if it was top it would still run to this 886 even if it was top it would still run because it paints the harmonic that would kill itself right so it 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 has to still do it has to go up to go down basically is what i'm trying to say um but what we want to see is the higher high, the sweep, right? The sweep, the retracement, and then here would be a potential relong to what would at this point be the, you know, the real high, the blow off top, right? The 73. And I'm pretty much like, I, I'm, I'm okay with 73. I can see 73, but 100K, nah, bro. You ain't getting no 100K. You can get rugged if you fucking think your target's 100K. You can get rugged hard. Real hard. You think the rug the other day was hard? You could barely even see it on the chart compared to the rug you're going to get if you're thinking about that. We're not doing that shit. So 73 is like our moonshot right here. And we got some work to do to get there. Like this ain't, this isn't pre-programmed yet. It looks like we can do it, though. We just need a few significant things to play out. Um, and again, guys, look. If you're still riding these longs, like I know some of you are, um, you know, your entries were in these zones, right? So if your entries are here and you play your cards right, even if this dumps to here, it's still a higher high. Much You're painting higher highs, right? Or higher lows, excuse me and higher highs but um you can technically ride this entry to this target okay like it's hard you got you gotta have some strong fucking hands when that when that uh bearish shark starts dumping i mean ideally you wouldn't be still holding the whole position right you take some off and you re-add back on the 5-0 but you still hold some in case it just blows off, right? There's no guarantee that the 5-0 is going to happen until it happens. Um, but I feel like a blow-off top would look more like this. I don't really see it just happening from here straight up. 
it's like here, come back down, and then do it. But by this time, guys, you know, you would be seeing significant bearish divergence up in this area at that point, right? Off of these highs. So this is really scary areas. Like, <clears throat> this is where I'm going to be opening some shorts that, I don't know, I might hold these for four or five, six months. We might see, I mean, man, th these could be some God tier entries, right? So like, just the, the, the longer you can let winners run, man, that's how you just start printing money. Um, it, it, again, it comes with time, it comes with experience, it comes with seeing market cycles, it comes with lots of things, right? But, um, but yeah, and again, you would be trailing stops, you know what I mean? Like, like we've been, like right here, you'd have this low. So when you finally painted this low and you start to come up, you know, you could start to move stops like this, right? And then as this 5.0 paints and moves, then you can move the stop again. So you're not like holding it, holding it. You're holding it with protection, right? You eventually get stopped out. It happens, but, uh, it's still fun to see how long you could let a winner run, right? It's real fun. You guys will enjoy yourselves when you try it. Um, okay, so, yeah, that's Bitcoin right now. I mean, we're looking good. Price action, we're painting green candles here. Um, we wanna get in that zone between 61.8 and 64.8. At that point, we're gonna be on red alert, red alert. Let's check out the <clears throat> Russian Ethereum. Oh, look at this. So last time we talked about Ethereum. Let's see, where were we at? I feel like we were, we haven't streamed for a few days, huh? I'm trying to, everything just all blended together at this point. Um, okay guys, so look, this was that head and shoulders that we basically said everyone everyone was trying to short this and we longed it, right? So now we're approaching these areas though where if we if somebody would have done that would be taking profits potentially here, right? So um why? Because these are fib extensions up into basically we're we're painting new highs on ETH all the time right now. Um, and these fibs overlay up in this area where you have two significant areas. You have this one, two, seven, two, one, four, one, four, which it, it, we talked about this and look, you haven't gone through it. We talked about it since it was way down here. We said, look, we have an overlaying one, two, seven, two, one, four, one, four. Go back to the last stream. You'll see it without the paint. Okay. Now look, we're just butting up against it. And we even talked about it. You potentially on these one, two, seven, twos, you see your first small retracement. Okay. But it could just be a back test of this previous high. Get the SR flip for the second time, right? The second one doesn't hurt. It's that third one that'll get you. Okay. The second one's just a double bottom. The third one's there's no more supply, right? So, um, okay. So basically what I'm saying there is don't, don't be worried about this because you see, there's a square up right here. That square up is right on that line at 2,600. And it would also probably paint that hidden bullish divergence. So that kind of price action, it's whatever. Does it have to happen? No. But if it happens and does that, it's still bullish. We're fine at that point. Okay. It's when you start losing these levels that are marked right and and you start regarding them as resistance and you lose another one and that's when you really start to worry okay we're not we're not at that point we're above the highs we're above the highs okay this is where we want to be this is where we want to be this is just chop this is resetting oscillators look i mean we even we even looked for this too we said we said this was going to come up and start diverging you, you you almost need to kind of paint that one little bit more um yeah so i mean we're close guys if if it gets up in here and wicks up into these zones layer out get 
get off the board on some of that take take that money right we we said we're ideally to be if you can get a wick up into the 29 25 area man that'll be sweet right but anything right now is in this gray box guys look layer 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 you just let it grab it let it let it go up there and grab grab your orders just these wicks will shoot up look at them on top of all these candles see these little these little nasty little wicks those are your friends right now let them go up and grab that stuff for you let them go up and grab it and then they'll nuke it for you and give you a reset and then they'll take it back again for you um but ultimately i look even when we get this guys okay so a couple things happened here for one, you got this weird higher high that normally isn't there, okay? But we talked about that being a very bullish thing, okay? So look, here's what I'm talking about. Uh, let me move this out the way a little bit, 1618. Okay, let me pull this down. Okay, so what we're talking about, guys, is normally this this b is a lower than the x okay it, it's a lower high down here somewhere like 886 786 618 it looks like this and that's how you get these butterflies or these deep crab patterns they paint like this where you have a higher low but you only have like a 618 786 886 type of b okay but look what eth did it painted this higher b and by doing that it invalidated the harmonic okay so there isn't there isn't really a harmonic but if there was and and okay you i say that it invalidates the harmonic but it it's it's overly bullish and you were gonna do this kind of wave anyways if this did validate the harmonic so by invalidating it did it really because it still was like extremely bullish and we talked about this one about to over outperform bitcoin and it did and it did on the ETH to BTC as well. So, okay, guys, if, but what I was just mentioning though is if this was an 886, you would be looking at this 1272 first. Oh, this is the 1414, excuse me. 1414 and then uh, 1618. So, 1618 is going to be right here, right at this first line, okay? 2925. So the only reason we have the higher line marked is because that first 1618 comes from here, from the April 15th high to the April 18th low, okay guys? This is where you get the, the lower of the two 1618s, the first green line. See that? So I'm gonna move that because we have it marked, the first green line. The second higher green line comes from that that freakishly bullish higher high and we get the top line like this so because we got this freakishly bullish higher high the i have this weird like gut feeling here that it's gonna push to that high side of everything because this was the asset that was overly bullish the whole time so if bitcoin even just manages to get to that 886 level and paint a bearish shark in the worst case scenario, it still gives ETH a chance to hit 3K. You see what I'm saying? So there's a there's definitely argument there. Again, again, can you do this and come back right here at 26? Sure, whatever. But eventually you're gonna get in this great box. <clears throat> We're gonna stream tomorrow. What well, over the weekend you're probably gonna do it. And and, and Price action loves to do bullshit on the weekend because you create these gaps, right? Weekend sideways doesn't create gaps. Weekend, uh, you know, pump or dumps, those create gaps. So it's just ultimate fuckery, right? So ultimate fuckery is gap up on the weekend, tag 3K, gap back, and then come back down, right? And just leave this, I don't know, just leave this weird gap somewhere um, on the futures. Okay, so 3K on ETH. But yeah, when we get up there, it's not going to be looking pretty, guys. So don't get overly cocky that once it gets to 3K, don't start saying 4K. Because that, that's when we mess up, okay? Just get yours as close as you can to 3K. Get out. We'll check back later on ETH. And then we do it again, okay? 
Look, exactly why. Perfect example of what's about to happen. You, you have this butterfly crab type pattern where you have the higher low, the lower. See, ETH did this, right? Uh, to USDT, but this is ETH to BTC, painted it correctly. You had this overhead resistance, critical overhead resistance, where the wick, it, it tested it with this wick and failed. But then when it came on that third time, you got the break, hook, and the go. You hit the 1618 golden mean ratio, wick above it to the optimal entry, and then that was it. Guys, textbook shit, textbook. And if you didn't take profit, who's the fool, right? You're right back at entry, maybe, if you bought the break, hook, and go. Hopefully, you were in from down here, and you're still decent, but you're starting to give it all back. And there's no signals of any upside on that. That's engulfing with follow-through. That's bear pull, bear flag, measured move. You're coming down. You're coming probably down here, bruh. You're coming all the way back to entry. You're gonna be up, you're gonna be up like half a percent when it gets back to your entry. So this is why we do this, guys. This is this box up here on ETH, right? This is this gray box. So that's what we're talking about. We wanna see just like we're right here chopping at that one four one four, chop at the one four, chop at the one four, and then when you think it's gonna come back down, it doesn't. It goes up, wicks into this box, indecision doji, shooting stars, double top, divergence, right? And then nukes back down. So so yes, can it happen right away? Sure. We this is what we were saying on ETH, right? And then go. But it it, it also could just to, you know, go sideways long enough to reset, then come up, and eventually you find your way back. But either way, both of them kind of ended up back at that line, right? At that previous, what was previous overhead resistance now being regarded as support. Um, but right now, getting back below it where you are here is not good. So for ETH to BT, and, and this is a good sign for Bitcoin though, because if ETH BTC right now is dumping, this gives us a shot for Bitcoin to get up into that area we just talked about where it's like 61 to 63, right? So this is like, they're both painting the correct story, right? This one finished, so the other one can start, right? Start again. And look, guys, remember, one strike, two strike, three strikes, okay? So now on this back downside, it's not necessarily over for ETH BTC because you've only gotten one strike, here's strike two, which means you can you can find yourself recovering out of this, squaring up, painting a lower high, and when you come back down, that's strike three, and that's where it's over. You see what I'm saying? It's like this rule of three, okay? Three strikes, you're out, okay? But it's not over, it's just, it's Bitcoin's turn to get a little, and then, you know, ETH could get a little back and then, you know, just this eb ebbs and flows, right? Ebbs and flows. Okay, so that's um, ETH BTC. We're basically kind of done with it for now. I mean, if you wanted to try and take another long here, uh, you, have, you have a decent area where it's kind of an easy, I don't know, easy invalidation where you, you don't want to see this fail on this and start to go off again right because that's going to confirm it um so what you want to see is get, get back above it right that so it's it's a really easy tight area for you to you know be within to figure out what it's going to do um which is what you want because it, it allows you to have tighter stops when you have easier points of invalidation right <clears throat> but anyways i'm not i'm not taking this one at the moment I was in this one, took some, that's it. Um, Litecoin. Okay, see, here's here's what we we're talking about, guys. This is that critical area. We said we have to uh, we have to SR flip this area. So we the easy invalidation points, right? So we said, look, here's that previous two lows, right? So if if we lose this, you're going to be able to just layer back in. You'll probably get a square up. But if you can get above this, and you did, and you can hold it, 
you're going to go up to the top side. So these are probably out of out now unless this fails, right? So so again, you don't what I'm saying is you don't want to see this. Right? You don't want to see it SR flipped as resistance. You want to see the SR flip as support, support, hold it as support, right? So uh, and if you can get that, you will see our target area, the 786, which would complete our bearish cipher. So our bearish cipher, we identified back down in this area. Um, it was basically, I mean, dragon-esque. We basically had this similar kind of price action formation on everything where you put in these, these double bottoms, right? Where you had this low and then the slightly higher low basically creating the feet and these dragons basically you know this one's not as like the xrp one will be perfect we'll get to that but either way this is more cypherish but still so the cypher you can go as low as the 1414 you basically hit the 1414 you have a 50 percent in the middle this could be as low as a 382 or as high as a 618 okay so you were just right in the middle of that. So that's perfect. And then that would put your D target at the 786. Okay. Uh, 786. So that's a minimum 300 e uh, Litecoin again, 310, right? So you're at current price 270. So you just want to hold this, this 265 area. Um, and if you can hold it, you can finish and get your targets. Um, you, you really don't want to lose these lows. Uh, you really don't. You really don't. Um, can you double bottom at them? Yeah, you could double bottom there. But you don't want to lose them, okay? Do not want to lose that. If we get up here and paint this cipher, at this point, two options can happen. It, it's either a cipher or it's a shark. And if it's a shark, it's only going to do a little bit more, okay? Either way... It, you're in the same zone, right? And then if it's a sh if it's a shark and you sell off here, that's bad. Because if even if it was a cipher, it was going to be bad. You're going to come back down here to the A and the C. But if it's a shark, again, we want it to be the bullish bearish kind where it goes to the one one three, right? By going to the one one three, you have the chance to come back to the fifty and then go and hit that 5-0, right? So what would a 50 look like on that? It would be even lower. It'd be like this, right? So you'd, at that point, come back and test what was once resistance, resistance, resistance as support, hit the 5-0, and then run again, right? So we want to see, not only do we want to see at first this hit a cipher, we want the cipher to invalidate, hit a 886 shark. Then we want the shark to get even more sharky and go to the 113 okay so that's your extremely bullish litecoin which can get you maybe litecoin to 400 okay that's the only way that's the only way you need the 113 right now if you stop at the 786 and the 886 it's over you're going back to 200 but if you can get to the 113 and 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 manage to morph at the 50 with the hidden bull div back at like two basically back at like 280 the 280 would at that point be the the high the higher low again right because look that's basically saying that this is our current higher low and at that point we would put in another higher low up here at 280 okay so price action would hold here run all the way up come back down higher low 280 and that's where you maybe see 400 ltc only way only way possible right now okay yfi i think you're going to be basically of course at mercy of what these other ones do right bitcoin <clears throat> litecoin but i mean so far yeah, and eth right if they can all get up and hit those higher targets you're going to see this 886 55 55 thousand dollar yfi okay and that's just your first stop again this is a shark so if you can get that 113 okay if we can get the 113 on yfi 
we would be looking for the 50. That 50 is basically back in this area that we're basically at right now, okay? So it would look like this. Do, 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 do. You basically would be able to hold this, right? Hold this level, come up, hit the 113, retrace all the way back to it, but then you would be able to go up and hit those higher targets. Okay, guys? That's a it's a bearish shark morphing into a bullish 5-0. Okay. Um, so that's that's what we want to see on uh, YFI. And basically the fact that when I when I painted that let me put this to the 113 exactly real quick. When I painted that uh, fib right now, the fact that that 50 ends up being right where price is like at right now was a really good sign. Okay, so there's that 113. So let me refib that from the low to the 113. Yeah, see that 50 right here, guys? That's a good sign. Also, we had a target up there hanging out already so a lot of coinciding variables we like to see that so those must have been uh let's see what we were painting that from it must have it's a one two seven two yeah no that's the second one I'm not sure what that first one must have been our our shark must have been our shark so anyways guys yeah 60,000 is the real target we want to see on YFI because you get the the most bullish scenario of a bearish shark formation where you can get the morph into the 50. So we need to get to 60k to get this 113. That 113 is what we're after. We got the 1618 on the bottom, we want the 113 on the top. We got the 618 on the B. This is pretty textbook right now, guys. Pretty fucking textbook, okay? So, um, if somehow you can see that, that means you can have a stop as low as three to one. So your stop would have to be right here. And that's pretty good because you don't want to lose these, that previous low anyways. So if you were going to layer into a YFI long right here, it would look something like this. Okay, guys. <clears throat> where you'd be targeting the 113 so you can get a 3 to 1 and your stop would be below 45 currently you're at 48.9 target would be 60k um, that's how you would paint uh, paint something on YFI right now the dog see this shit was on stupid Allen fucking Mark Cuban Allen talking about dog to all these fucking Karens like guys that's top shit, man. You can't. Every the, what the dog is the new currency. Like that's what people are talking about right now. Oh, you can't have Bitcoin because it's it's too expensive. It's more of like store of value. It's like gold. It's gold. So, you know, the dog is what we need to buy like a soda at the gas station or whatever. I'm like, that's what people are saying. You know, I'm at the bar listening to this shit. Just like, I don't know what's wrong with these people. The, the freaking devs don't even, like, they've abandoned the project, like, three, four years ago. The fucking lead devs, like, guys, we're, we've abandoned the project. It's a meme. Like, bro, what are you guys fucking doing? It's not going to be the next global currency, <laughs> okay? <laughs> we're not here for the tech. Yeah, can you get a few more bucks out of it? Sure. It's 33 cents. Target's 40 cents. There you go. And then nuke it back to zero because that's all you do with this shit. Um, okay, look. This is currently painting a bearish bat. If you want to invalidate it, you have to break above 40 cents and you have to sweep the highs. At that point, you can talk butterfly, okay? If your butterfly... Oops, excuse me. Let me, let me uh, move this forward. Okay, if you're a butterfly, you go to the 1272. Okay, so these are your areas of interest for the dog. Um, it starts at the 1272, right? And it goes to the 1618, right? So if you were the dog and you were going to have your most 
bullish possible scenario, it would look like this. And with all that retail nonsense going on, maybe you get it. And all you're doing is just going to make them buy even higher because they're going to keep buying. You're going to get a few more paychecks out of them still. They can, they can keep adding on. They're not going to sell this. Okay, so 50 cents, so 40 cents, 50 cents, 60 cents. What are the odds? Psychological round numbers, right? So look, this is all we're doing, guys. We're fibbing from the high to low. And we hit the 1272, 1414, 1618. This first one was the 886. So it's just critical, critical fib levels, um, psychological round numbers, right? So, yeah, I mean that's a little bit of upside but this isn't like at this point i would be freaked out if you get 60 cents again on dog i'm shorting it i don't know about anybody else but if this if the if the divs are there and we get that kind of shit that's another like short for the ages man dog, it shouldn't even be like a penny what's it doing at 30 cents 40 cents 60 cents right this is gonna go all the way back down to under a penny and everyone's going to be crying. Oh, it's going to be funny. Um, I don't know, guys. We'll get it. We'll get our short here. It's, this is setting up real nice. Setting up real nice. Um, that's the dog. You had um, you had decent structure here when we broke out, right? Uh, painted these, these higher lows. Uh, it was more like right here. You painted this low, higher low kind of that spine here's the back and you're you, you know you're doing a pretty decent job of kind of holding it right so there's your dragon-esque shape right can you guys start to see that i don't know i'm not an artiste maybe i am but i never thought i was but maybe my chart looks arty um so maybe you back test this little neckline, um, get a little, confirm it again for the second time as support, regard it again as support, right? For the second time, get your hidden bullshit divergence, run again, 40 cents, 50 cents, 60 cents. That's what you could see on the dog. Bitcoin cash. Okay, guys, this was one we've been watching as well where, um, okay, so. Let me erase this just so you guys can see it a little clearer here. So, all right. We basically painted this big dragon, okay, where you have this down sloping trend line <clears throat> that acts as the as the as the spine, right, of a dragon. If it was your spine, if this is your head, right? This is your face come down these are your arms like a t-rex comes down there's the feet right and now we're now we're painting the tail okay so the white line is the spine of the dragon okay and then his like his his torso right his body his his stomach whatever you want to call it that's that's the area that's critical for dragons, okay? You have to flip them. SR flip the torso. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. SR flip the torso of the dragon into support. And if you can do that, you can get up and hit the head of the highs again. And not only that, but you usually sweep them. I'm not... You usually sweep them, guys. It's strong enough sometimes where you could find yourself sweeping that head, making the tail. But then, you know, it, it, it's not, it doesn't last forever. But um, yeah, that tail sometimes is taller than its own head, okay? Um, okay, so that's like step one, pattern one. You have a dragon, okay? Dragon, sorry if you couldn't see that head. Um, dragon is painting. So what we did here is we took the low on April 25th, this, this higher low that painted the, 
the the back leg, right? The back legs, back legs. High or low here, we took a measured move from there up to the top of this previous high here, April 16th. And it was an area that was regarded pretty well as resistance. You see that, guys? So that's our SR flip area. So we took a measured move from the low up to that neckline, spine, whatever you want to call that, basically overhead, critical overhead resistance area, right? We take that and we cloned it, okay? And we just moved it up to the top of that of that critical overhead resistance area. And it gave us this zone up here, okay? So then we took a fib from the all-time high. I don't know if it's the all-time high, but the very discernible high to the current swing low, April 23rd. And this gave us an 886 up here, guys. So we brought this in to this 886 area. So by doing that, our target measured move 886, and then you have this square up area. So it basically just gives us just this nice zone that we would layer, right? So uh, you wouldn't want to see this um, torso gray box lost, okay? If price action fails below this and regards this as resistance, that's bad, right? So what you want to see is that it holds it as support. And it's already, I mean, you basically got the break and you've kind of run up. So if you hook and go, it's not going to be, that's fine. Okay. So ultimately I feel like we get up in this zone and you see 1150 to 1200 on BCH. Right now you're literally at $1,000 psychological round number resistance. But if you can, that would be also be a good sign to get up above a thousand right and hold that ultimately 950 is kind of more critical than a thousand but i don't know um yeah i would say we should be pretty good though to see bch hit these targets okay so at this point um we would be also now painting a shark right 886 type stuff where that's the completion so Okay, this back spine here, kind of as your, as your B, right? B, C, one six one eight, eight eight six. Okay, eight eight six. So there's your eight eight six. There's your dragon. We'll make this like a, a forest green harmonic. Rawr. I don't know if that's good enough. Maybe we need it darken it anyways guys there's the dragon on bch it's a lot of green on a bch candle right on a bch chart we don't normally like that kind of shit but we're gonna short it don't you don't you forget about that we're gonna short this just not yet look you're above a thousand right now so let's continue on to SOL, we have a SOL request. Okay, so SOL, we basically painted, uh, let's see here. So, all right, let's, let's kind of look back guys. Okay, so the red, if you look at the red, this is where you painted bull, uh, bearish divergence, okay? Then you sold off. This is where you had uh, lower levels of positive momentum on higher highs, okay? You sold off. Then you rallied, okay? While you rallied, you, on the green line, now painted. And you ended up painting bullish convergence. So you got a little bit of a rally, okay? Then you sold off again. Then you sold off again, okay? Well, on this sell-off, okay, this is where doo, 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 this is where you are now currently painting some pretty significant hidden bullish divergence, okay? So now just look at the blue line, okay? So you had this lower, this first, this low, okay? And you painted the negative momentum. Okay, back on April 23rd, April 24th, you painted this negative momentum island, okay, on the MACD. 
um, from there, you you know you started to run up, okay, and as you sold off, you painted a much 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 larger negative histogram island on the um, on this uh, momentum right here, okay. So when you do that and price puts in a, a higher low, that's your hidden bullish divergence, okay? You also are doing that on the RSI where you're painting lower levels of relative strength. You see the lower levels of relative strength? But, but while you're doing that, the, the bears are unable to push price down, right? Price is up here. But the relative strength and the MACD were were much lower. Look at this. Look at this nasty negative momentum island, right? So it's like, okay, bears, I see you. I see you trying to push on us, but you weren't able to muster anything, right? Nothing. Instead, what did we do? We painted the hidden bullish divergence in blue, and we're painting a Bulkowski double bottom. We have a low on price with a basically equal low on price, okay? As the hidden bullish divergence is painting. You see this, guys? This is a trade right now. We would, one would enter right here, right where you are, anywhere you are, right now. Ape in. And your low, your stop would be below these lows. You do not want to lose those lows. Really, really tight invalidation point, right? Very tight stop because those lows are discernible and they're recent and they were with significant hidden bullish divergence so they're gonna they're gonna protect you so don't put your stop right at them put your stop below them right let them protect you let them show the way look this is three and a half to one trade guys 3.4 to one target fifty dollars sol Hidden bullish divergence, $50. Bulkowski double bottom, okay? SOL. Next, we have a request for FTT. <laughs> okay, FTT. You're painting bullish uh, convergence where price is painting uh, higher lows and the RSI and the MACD are also painting um, higher levels of relative strength, lower levels of negative momentum. This is converging to the upside. This should, in theory, get you to your target areas because this is just beginning to ascend, right? The, the, the price price has reversed and you are ascending to the upside uh, on FTT. What are you aiming at? You're aiming at a shark like most of these assets are, where at first your shark is going to be an 886, okay? So this is the first critical area, $58, critical. This is the cipher because this is cipher esque as well, where you this is this could be a cipher too. So you have very critical areas here. Mm. And you are on the top side starting to diverge bearishly too. So this this cipher is what you got to watch out for first. Okay. So what you need to have happen is invalidate the cipher, hit the 886. At that point, the momentum should be waning higher. And at some point, maybe you invalidate the RSI. Okay. So you go back to painting convergence again right you want to see that kind of invalidation um if you get an 86 again we gotta watch we gotta watch we gotta watch the macro here with bitcoin and ethereum of course but you're basically at an area where you should just be layering the fuck out okay long long story short from here to here layer out get out as much of it as you can get in these zones, good. Take a stop loss, trail it up, follow yourself with a stop loss. If this holds and gets up into this first area, bring a stop a little higher. If it gets into the second area, 
bring a stop a little higher. If it gets above the second area, bring a stop a little higher, right? If you touch that third area, you should almost be all the way out, but your stop is going to be well into profit by then, right? It's really all you, um, whoops. There we go. I think I hit full screen on accident. Um, that's all you're really trying to do here, guys. Just, just layer out on FTT. Get anything you can between 56 and 60, and the party's probably going to be over. Um, the best case scenario, though, remember, is we get the 113. You get the whole top side. If you can get the full top side, that means you have a chance at the morph. Okay, so how would it morph? 5 0. But you got to retrace. You got a 5 0 first, right? That's going to hurt. So either way, you want to layer out there. Even if you're going to morph, you should still be taking the majority off of the table. Okay? Um, at this point, that's where. Whoops, let me put that back. At this point, that's where we would look to re-enter into a long or re-add anything that you took off, right? Take You should take off, you should only be holding like 20% of that position back down, 30%. You should take off 70 to 80%. Layer back in here and ride for a double top again. And this is where you could be at a three to one like this, okay? And at this point, this is how you would find yourself doing a double top, right? Um, and then and then you sell off again. So that's probably what FTT is going to do. It's likely that $60 is it. Nobody tells him. Re request for FTM. FTM. Okay. FTM. Phantom. Looks like uh, this asset hasn't been around as long as many of the others that we have been charting tonight. And uh, by the looks of it, <clears throat> its entire life is painting what appears to be a bear cipher. We have the all-time high, X, the A, low, March 24th, A, low. You have the B, 50% Dow's theory retracement on April 17th. You have a, the all-time low, lower low, slightly lower low, April 23rd. We'd be looking for 786, 886 type retracement. Here's the 786. Here's the 886. Okay, guys, so this is already painting a shark, okay? So shark is live. What do you want to see? Again, you guys know this. If the shark stays here, that's it. You're going to come all the way back down to 55 cents. You want this shark to be the kind that goes to the 113, okay? So you need this to paint the higher high. But either way, like we said, even when you get the higher high, you're still going to get the 50% retracement from there, which eventually still finds you back at 60 cents, 55 cents. So eventually you're going to get there anyways. It's just a matter of how much more upside before you get that nuke. So guys, don't get too greedy here. Uh, it looks like you're exceeding the 886, which means you layer around the 113. Okay, so... What could you do to tighten that up? You could zoom in and you could fib from a, a more local because you because you know your top point, right? That eight eight that one one three. So now you say, okay, well what, what coincides with that locally? Um nothing nothing's in that zone. So what sucks is that here where you are at this uh eight eight six, right? That's the 113. Down here at this 886, there is stuff here. The 1272, 1414. So I don't know. I don't know if you get this 113 or not on FTM. You're kind of basically you're you're playing with the top at this point though. Either way, how much how much room? How much was what was really there for you, right? Not a ton of room. You're talking about another 20% 
uh, the best case scenario. And then you're going to hit that psychological dollar. There's a 2618 and a dollar overhead. Those are those are going to act as our protection for a short is what those are going to do. So we would have a stop above those. So anywhere in that area that we can short, um, that's where our stop would be protected above is above a dollar above that 2618 protecting ourselves so i'd be looking to not only get out of any sort of long in this gray box but then also probably shorting it as well um which is basically front running a dollar guys um because yeah i mean there's i don't know she doesn't look that good that hot you would back test this previous what was once resistance 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 as support right and that could be your target area so that's a three to one trade right there on a on a target if you can get this one one three shark it's also going to be the morph into the five oh so the one one three would be where let's see the one one three one one three is there so if the short was anywhere close to that three to one would allow your stop to be even a little further three to one okay and then if we go from the C low to the D high, we'd be targeting this 50 right here. So we'll tighten our stop based on our target, three to one again. And it would look like this, guys. If you can get it, I'm gonna probably take some of that. Okay, and then this being your area of reversal would also be your re-entry long for your 5.0. And you would sweep, ideally target the stops, right? Sweep the stops, three to one, two trades, FTM. That's how the next, uh, I don't know, discernible little future for FTM can, uh, can likely play out, something like this. Um, okay, FTM. Next request in the chat. We have cake. Oh, look at that, guys. Bearish dragon starting to play out. What are the odds, right? We alerted this earlier. Uh, Duck shorted this when I said bearish dragon. Um, how do you inverse bra? Alt I. Okay. It's different command on the Mac. Um, <clears throat> okay, so look, this is the dragon, guys where you have the spine, the feet, right? So torso areas right in this area. So we want that SR flip uh, in this in this torsoed area where we have this uh, congestion area, okay? So um, let's see if that worked. Okay, so bearish dragon, we would like to see that area flipped into resistance is what I'm saying, okay? So flipped and in, in rejected okay um makes sense that you would target what was once a previous kind of neckline area right as well um excuse me guys uh okay so cake uh what else did we see on cake diverging asset bearishly bearishly diverging on the macd well price was putting in slightly higher highs you were getting lower levels of positive momentum rsi also diverging bearishly where as price was putting in higher highs the rsi was putting in lower levels of relative strength okay um you also painted a dragon bearish dragon you are now back testing and regarding the spine the yeah the spine as resistance okay so not a good sign. What else was it? Critical fib. Pretty sure it was like a. Yeah, look, you got you got all the way up to that two six one eight guys, and double topped up there. It was way oversold. People were. I wasn't really watching this. I mean, we took some profit on this a long time ago, um, but um, yeah, I saw people just overly bullish on this asset so i was like oh let me look at that and then we saw the dragon saw the divergence shorted it i mean just standard when you when you start to see things over and over again you 
you just get confident in a setup when it, when it appears, right? And then you just take advantage of it. Um, the stop was is easy because it's above these previous highs. Stop loss is above forty four dollars, so pretty tight, easy invalidation um, where you can have a pretty nice um, trade here, guys, on stuff like this where we would ideally target this previous um, area down here and that's three to one. So, I don't know, gives you gives your trade a good amount of room to breathe. I, it would take a lot of strength for it to go up there to get your stop, you know what I mean? And it seems like that strength right now, it, it, it's not really in the cards, you know what I mean? I'd like to see like some hidden bullish divergence attempting to appear, but all you have is bearish convergence and this bearishness just started happening. So like I'm in this cake short and probably gonna hold it for a good probably two days, maybe three days, and then kind of see just see. But again, you never know how fast these are gonna dump. You gotta layer it right away. Just because it might take a few days to get there, you still put the you still have the orders right away, guys. You never know when these wicks happen, right? So that's cake um when we first pulled this chart up though guys look the entries for cake were down here the we when we paint these gartleys or these butterflies or these bats right at the lows this is the entry guys this is the double bottom this was the dragon right this was the dragon with the double bottom with the harmonic these are the entries not up here guys this is not the you, you see what i'm saying we we look for areas of low risk high reward okay this is i don't know too many people talking like cake is the next fix i i don't know i don't look at fa so it's hard for me to relate to that side of things but yeah i'm short xrp Okay, this was that one. Oops, sorry guys. Let me back out of that. Um, yes, sorry. Hit replay mode. Um. Okay, this was the one that was textbook, really freaking textbook. Okay, where we had the d very discernible spine the slightly higher low a lot of those ones got some equal lows or some lower lows but this one got that perfect perfect little higher low it's really nice um you got those are probably from from the daily while you were painting these lows look what was happening on the rsi you were painting higher levels of relative strength right and the macd was also painting much higher levels of negative momentum where it was basically about to turn positive right you see this we put a low the lower low when you painted this low wick you couldn't even you couldn't even muster any negative momentum you waned three times and then sent it that was it as the rsi was coming up now we've reached the top okay top the the range high of the rsi um our MACD is beginning to roll over and it's not the best, right? We don't like to see that, but RSI, we're probably still gonna paint one, one more slightly higher high so the RSI could paint another slightly lower level, right? Where it'll kind of come back up and then go down again. That allows, um, whoops, that allows this divergence to paint, okay? kind of hard to see when it's so small there but um yeah i mean it's it's not over yet but you might get a little bit of a, a reset and look at this uh this big bullish engulfing candle um so these these do some weird things guys so it's like a uh it'll paint a flag like this and then it'll break to the upside then it'll come back down square up paint the hidden bull run again okay so it does weird things um just ultimate fuckery right ultimate fuckery 
So look for a square up right here first at $1.71. And then look for a dump back to a dollar forty. Regard that. Okay, remember we talked about this torso, guys. So we got to regard this torso as support. Okay. So by breaking out of this channel up, just to stop everybody out, and then we come back down. SR flipped a torso, hidden bullish divergence, run again. Okay. So. Price action would do something like this, 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 okay? XRP, XLM, similar things, guys. Uh, you're, look at this channel we painted. Look how respectful. So much fucking respect. We painted this channel like, I don't know, it was like down here. Came up, touched the top of it, came back down, regarded the heart line as a heart line, as first as support, and then as resistance, and now as support again. Ideally, you come back, you touch the top side first, hit the measured move. Look at that measured move right at that top side. Come on, bruh. You hit that measured move, you sell off, you square it up, you double bottom, you run the highs. Bam. Okay? XLM. Uh, the measured move is at doo -doo -doo, 56 cents, okay? And then the square up is at 48 cents, okay, guys? So get out pretty soon here. Hit that measured move, get out, take most of it off, 70, 80%. Relayer back in here, three to one. Oops, sorry. Three to one, do do do, three to one, right there. This is how the next round of the trade would look, and you would be targeting this uh, ultimate area here where you have another square up, uh, another square up at 63 cents, okay? And then you also have this 886 at 65 cents. You also have 65 cents there, and that would pretty much probably be a wrap again. Um, that's where you would, if you wanted it, you'd need this to hit the one four or the one one three if you want the high, right? If it fails at this eight eight six, that's going to be it. So again, that's where the dragon, I mean the, excuse me, the bearish shark needs to be extra bearish sharky, so it can get into that fifty percent retrace and five zero. So let's test it. Where would the one one three be? The one one three would be here. Where would the 50 be? The 50 would be here, right where the top of the measured move is. Okay, guys, so come up, hit the measured move, come back down, hit the square up, double bottom, hit and bull, run up, hit the high side. Maybe you get the whole thing, right? You, you could take this twice. You could take this twice. Nothing wrong with taking that shit twice. You take some there and you take some there, okay? You come back down. You come back down. Um, ba -ba -ba. Okay, so run up, take some off, run back up, hit the 113, come back down again, 50, run back up again, okay? So 50 would then look like this. You'd come back down, hit the measured move. And then you would do it again from here and you would sweep. Three to ones, three to one guys, three to one guys, three to one guys would be here. We're gonna sweep three to ones and okay. All right, sorry, I was just painting the path here guys. Okay, so let me race. I'm not gonna erase, but here's the price action. We run up, hit the measured move, come back down, double bottom at the square up, come back down, hit, take profit target one, hit, take profit target two, double top, sell off, hit the 5-0, double bottom, run up, and yeah. Watch that shit if that plays out. Oof. Oh man, that would be nice. 
Okay. So, let's see here. Somebody just said, if I could please hit ETH. Yeah. See? What the fuck? Bruh. We're filling. We're filling, boys. Ding, 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 ding. I mean, my shit's buzzing this whole damn time, but I'm just not paying attention to it. Um, this... <sighs> ETH all-time highs. ETH is in our box. We had we had take profit orders layered. Oh, feels good, doesn't it? Oh yeah, that was a nice stretch. Feels really good, really good. You should try it. Wow. Wow. Just wrecking everybody right now that short <laughs> holy shit <laughs> all right guys so look we gotta paint that divergence okay so that's why that was there that paint we basically said this has to run up and has to paint a lower level of positive momentum while well, price is painting a higher high okay that's how we're gonna get the bearish divergence ideally we want it to happen up at the top of this range of our gray box which is ETH three thousand dollars wow I mean we're almost there like you guys should already be taking profit you guys should be taking profit right now like 12% should already be locked in of your of your long 12% or or your stop needs to be or you need to be playing with a stop but the thing with that is you either you either if you're playing with a full stop you're going to take yourself out completely when it hits or if you're playing with a partial stop and it drops you know significantly fast again you could be left chasing trying to get out you end up having a market right now you could be limit layering out guys set them limit orders out in front so right now price is 28.33 have an order at 28.36 have another one 28.42 28.46 28.49 28.57 you see what i'm saying layer 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 and just let this price just go up and just grab them right that's all you could do right now just let it happen let it come to you Pretty sure we left off on SNX, or maybe it was EOS. It was EOS. <sighs> Jesus, guys, look at how this is following the paint sometimes. Like, we pre-paint this. We pre-painting this. You guys, someone market making in here? Who's doing this shit? Man, this is beautiful. Beautiful. Look at that dragon. Look at that. Look at the feet. Look at the slightly higher low. Look at the discernible spine, okay? Look at the breakout and back test of the spine. Then, then look at that clear, clear, clear overhead resistance approaching at $6.80. We need to hit that. And, and you might not get through it the first time. It's okay. But we need to get above it, just as shown. And we need to regard it as support, okay? S, R, flip. Okay. SR flip of six dollars eighty cents, and you can see eight dollars fifty cents EOS. It's a beautiful thing. SNX, same thing. You've basically are have already flipped. Look, break. Hook, go, SNX, aiming at $19. After that, $22. It's going, boys. It's going. It's going. Everything's playing out.
You guys should be in the green on all kinds of shit right now. <laughs> Come on. A V A X Dragon Spine. Okay. Bear sleep dumped out of here. Lower. Low. Slightly higher low. Painted the feet. Boom. So we got the feet. The feet. The spine. Where's the torso? You identifying the torso without me yet? The torso. Okay. You could even tighten it a little. You could say this was the torso. So resistance, resistance, resistance. Break it out. Hold it. Engulfed. Ah. Above the 618, next target, a Cypher, Sharkish, 786, okay? So, ideally it's a Shark, puts you at $38, uh, because it seems more Sharky than Cypher-esque. Let's check it out. Very Sharky stuff. Uh, it could be a Cypher, because uh, the reason what I'm looking for on that, guys, is the cipher only goes as low? Mm, like it's like purple. The cipher only goes as low as a one four one four. Okay, so when this one four one four down here, which could have been as low as basically right, like right here, nineteen dollars. But if this would have been a one six one eight down here. It's the cipher's gone and it's only a shark, okay? So if you get this 1618 down here at 17, we would have known it was a shark. But because it was here, it can still be a shark and it can be a cipher. So a cipher is going to first be a 786. So 786 is going to be right. 786 is going to be right here. And that coincides, guys, with this previous. Um, resistance area okay so we gotta watch out right there 36 and that's 36 dollars critical round number so i would say this thing's gonna slam into 36 dollars pretty soon and then get tested hard so you want to see 886 creates the shark but the shitty shark right this is the shark that kills you okay bites you but the more bullish of the bearish sharks is the one that gives you the higher high and the morph we like morph morphy sharks if we can morph we get the 50 and we would morph into a 50 here okay so ideally we want to see price do do sorry ideally we want to see price action hit flip hit reject double bottom go Okay, something like that for AVAX. ATOM. Looks like you are, um, you put in a really nice inverse head and shoulders, clear, discernible neckline. We'll conservatively measure the move here, where we'll take not the wick low, but more of the candle close to the neckline overhead resistance and we'll paste it here and that coincides with a square up whoops the square up is like here okay it coincides with the square up it's a measured move and it's more than likely a critical fib 786 is the square up that's the target okay uh this would be at that point a cipher x a b C786 cipher ATOM $25 current price $23 uh, look for a target of 25 and a stop would have to be three to one so you'd be right there you'd be using that previous neckline as support I would ideally be below the wicks and uh, two to one okay you like three to one but sometimes two to one's all you get right um, yeah you may wick above that Turn this thing into a shark, get the 886-113 type stuff, right? But first stop, $25, $26, ATOM.
next uh, major area of interest. Dot. We have a request for D O T. Similar price action. We're painting uh, inverse head and shoulders esque stuff. Okay. Eh, you like to see that a little higher, but it, still, it's the same type of structure, right? And then this is, puts your dragon's feet, right, with that higher low. It's inverse head and shoulders. You could even maybe say that this one was the really the inverse head and shoulders one, right? And that this was more of a secondary type of low. And the inverse head and shoulders is in white, okay? So we have a clear, clear, very clear neckline. And look what's happening, okay? Measured move from the candle close to the neckline high, clone it, bring it over to the uh, previous SR flipped area. Okay, this is our, what was once resistance is now hopefully being regarded as support. Okay, measured move coincides with a squared square up area, a couple square ups, okay, where we're right smack in the middle of two square ups. Fibonacci says the same thing. We'll take the fibs and we will make the fibs a different color. We'll make the fibs purple. We'll clone the fibs. Okay. Uh, sorry, the fib was per was right there. Okay. So we got the fibs in purple. Okay, we got the square ups in white. We got the measured move in green. And let's put a harmonic on that. It's gonna be Sharky 886, okay. Ooh, too deep, real deep, real deep. You wanted 618. If so, you would've gotten an 886. Ideally, this is the zone. We're gonna layer in here. Okay, guys, and you are going to be entering this on this break hook and go, targeting the zone of the measure move, the fib 786886, stop below the previous discernible swing low, and you got a two to one. You could get a little more greedy with your target. Um, something like that, okay, guys? Um, this is a DOT to USDT. All right, yeah, looks good. Are you guys, like the more we're seeing these over and over and over again like this, is it starting to kind of, I don't know. Are you able to identify them on your own aside from seeing it more, I guess is my question. And hopefully the answer is yes. Because that's the ultimate purpose of what we're doing every day that we stream is to teach you guys what to identify. So in the event Duck gets Hillaried, then you guys can still feed your families. Okay. All right. Here's our lower low. See this one on CRV, it was a slightly lower low. You see that guys? We we like the higher low. And it was just a wick, but it was still still did it. But either way. Pretty, the, all three of them are Bukowski double bottoms. One has a higher low, one has an equal low, and one has a slightly lower low. But the ones that have the slightly higher lows, oftentimes, oftentimes, um, are, are just show more strength, right? Kind of like how we noticed Ethereum had more strength than some of the other assets, and we said, okay, look, Ethereum is going to outperform Bitcoin, right? Well, the, the assets that have that higher low here probably outperform the ones with these lower lows. 
And remember what happened, guys, on that last dump with assets like CHR and CHV. Oh, I forget what they were. Um, so we were doing really, really good out out the gate, right? They were they were um, pumping. But then when Bitcoin dumped, the party was over. Everything nuked. So the problem was is those assets took too long to get to their targets. And that sometimes happens when you're painting the lower low because you're spending more time going down while the other ones are already going up. They got a head start on you. They finished the race. They reached the target before before Bitcoin said party's over. Because when Bitcoin says the party's over, guys, the party's fucking over. I don't give a fuck what you say or what your shitcoin is. When Bitcoin says that's it, that's it, okay? So again, we talk about this with alts. You get these windows. You take advantage of your window of opportunity. Meanwhile, you need to be paying attention to the macro. The macro is being Bitcoin, being Bitcoin. When the macro says turn, then you know you turn on everything, right? So we just that's why you trail stops. That's why you have stops at break even or in profit slightly or trailed. You can have two separate stops. You can have a, a, a stop loss at entry at break even, and you could also be trailing a stop loss stop loss for partial amount of your position position. So even if that trailing stop gets hit, you still had a stop at break even and the trailing stop was only for a percentage of your position. So then you can reset a new trailing stop at the next kind of, you know, strategic area and run another trailer for some more profit, right? There's just different ways to do it. And and at, on top of all that, you still have take profit orders layered overhead, right? So you have all kinds of things, tools working for you at your discretion. Um, and that's how you can keep things from going from you know, profits to shit in an instant, right? So CRV, um, again, we're looking for this torso SR flip here, guys, where we're basically doing it, okay? So we take this measured move of a structure from these discernible closes to this kind of torsoed area, right? And we're going to clone this. We're going to bring it up here. We're going to fib from the discernible swing high to the discernible second low, April 25th, wick low. And we see that our measured move in the 786 coincide. So the 786 being $4.12 and our measured move being $4, basically. Just just slightly above four dollars is where she where she wants right now. That's that's kinda what um CRV's looking at doing right now, guys. Um again, what could somebody do here in the event of a non existent position and they were wanting to get in? They would be targeting this area. And ideally you want three to one, it would be below the torso. Um, again, you probably want to use these wicks so you, you don't get the same kind of risk to reward. So sometimes, you know, if a trade isn't, there's better trades out there. You don't always have to just take these, right? You can get one. You'll, if you look for the same pattern or if you would have been in sooner, right? Instead of now, you know, this is kind of, you're buying the middle of the range, right? You shouldn't be buying here. I'm just saying if you were, I'm not, but I know some of you still do anyways, just while you're watching this so if you were in a range see how you're buying in the middle of the range you should have been buying down here at the bottom of the range guys range low bukowski double bottom okay uh sorry um and at that point look you had some pretty uh pretty discernible divergence happening where you have a low on price with a lower low on price right and the it was more like this one so you have a low on price lower low on price with higher levels of negative momentum and on this second low again you were only able to slightly wane and you never really even painted a uh, negative momentum there uh, rsi with the tail end divergence we like the tail end tail end being that second low tail end okay the you know what would be bottom right tail end 
Uh, it's even better when you have 3x, uh, 3x MACD with tail end RSI at a pattern uh, development completion area. Okay, that's that's my favorite. Next, we got a request for Maker. Maker. Whoa. Converging bullishly. RSI attempting to what could potentially be a little bit of a breakout here. Uh, RSI trends do 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 this, guys. You can have a trend line on an RSI. You can have a head and shoulders on an RSI. It's not that you. It's not a traditional pattern, but it still develops the same um, structure. And yeah, so again, be looking for even a little back test wouldn't hurt you. But ideally, you would like to see bearish divergence eventually eventually develop on the RSI on Maker. But until then, you may be able to get a little bit of price action here to the upside. Yeah, uh, you know, it's it's always nice when you see assets painting, you know, higher lows, right? So paint a higher low, bullish convergence, RSI's, you know, starting to run in your direction. These are good things at this point. Um, oh, another good signal here was the fact that you held this previous all-time high. I don't know if it was all-time high, but you basically regarded this as a support, right? Flipped it again. So you just keep making these ranges on RS on uh, Maker, right? So we had this already previously painted where we had strike one, strike two. When we got this strike three, we sent it, created what was the new range high, came back down, tested the range low. And you basically, guys, um, like you can see how you created a new range there, and now you're outside of that one and attempting to create a new one up here. So we'd be looking to start to fib now let's zoom in a little sorry okay here we go targets discernible swing high april 22nd to the april 23rd swing low ideally we're going to be targeting 1272 16 uh, 1414 1618 fib extensions here so first area being 5467 next area 5722 and finally 6083 on maker we need to break this critical basically final boss right we talked about this on some other things we could go to bnb because i'm pretty sure bnb just did this shit we have this high the second high, this third high, guys. Look, this happened right here, okay? You're looking at it twice. So, you have this strike one, strike two, right? Strike one, strike two. Now we need that strike three. Sometimes, oh look, see this lower failure? So this might be this lower failure you sell off again and then when you eventually though you're going to get this strike three right and when you get that third times the charm that's how you get that break okay so let's look to test um let's look to test that area and you know that's that would be something good we would definitely like to see that okay so what is this maker Let's move to Ray. Oops. Need my arrow. Okay, Ray. Ray is painting a butterfly type of crab pattern. Okay. So on Ray, we basically here is your strike one, strike two, here's your strike three, break, hook, go, back test. Let's see if we can get 
Oops. Here, here you go. Here's some more hidden bullish divergence. Okay, guys. So we have um, this low on price, right? And now we're putting in a much higher low on price. Well, you're getting the hidden bearish divergence on Ray. So this hidden bearish divergence, you're also getting it on the RSI. We have a lower level of relative strength and a slightly, oh wait, no, this is just converging still. So convergence on the RSI, but a hidden bullish divergence on the MACD. You're also, um, if we zoom in further now that we've painted the, we now know what this blue line is now, our hidden bullish divergence. We could also see that we are painting a Bulkowski double bottom right here. Uh, Bukowski double bottom at the hidden at the hidden bullish divergence, uh, signifying impending price action continuation to the upside. This was also a critical SR flipped area, okay, where we've already had one critical SR flip and we have another one. These are higher lows. This is bullish price action double bottom, um, targeting. $15 and $18 on RAY. Hidden bear or hidden bull. Hidden bull. Hidden bull. Upside. Okay. Matic. Um. Nothing is discernible. This one is kind of uh, kind of played out here already, guys. Not an area you'd be wanting to enter into a long. Yeah, I mean these you're you're up in really really extreme territories here. Um, a lot of times you end up seeing this do some kind of square up. Okay, put in a lower high. Head and shoulders esque price action. No real edge for a bear here. I mean, for a bull. Possible edge for a bear developing. Um, you would like to see this hold, right? And confirm as a rejected area. You do not want to see this high swept. Okay? So that high being swept would invalidate any sort of short that you would take here. That being said, it would also be your stop loss above the wick high. You would not want to see that wick taken. If you do, you would want to be exiting your short, being that that's your stop. You can target a three to one. So your target would be down here. There is a square up area there. That's not a bad area for a target. On Matic, okay? 60 cents, you're basically at 88 cents, or you would short 88 cents back into the 60 cent area. Uh, it'd give you three to one on, on a trade, okay? Not a real edgy asset at the moment. Uh, yeah, age, AJ, sorry, sometimes I mean to say bearish and say bullish or vice versa. I Just so many charts, it just, like on uh, Wolf of Wall Street when he's like, so many digits, da, 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 da. You just got to do a big rail sometimes, or I don't know how that conversation went down, but something like that. All right. End phase energy. Okay, guys. So look, did we sell off? Yes, we did sell off. But we talked about this as a potential, remember? We said break above this neckline. We were above it. We talked about earnings approaching. Earnings were... were earnings were... Um, Earnings were good. We beat earnings. Earnings were beat. Okay, but there was this wit. There's this uh, gap down here. We saw this gap, and there was a square up. Okay, so all we kind of really did is, oh, maybe this is that gap. Felt. It looks like it might have already happened, March twenty fifth. Either way, it's almost double bottoming right here. I'm not really concerned at this point. 
I'd really start to get concerned if we lose the 127 low, okay? That's concerning. Until then, I think uh, targets are in store. I think uh, one could definitely, if not in, get in <laughs> uh, with the stop below this low. So really good area for uh, invalidation. You would not lose hardly anything at this point if you were stopped and you have massive upside potential, okay? RSR, um, RSR is looking decent here, guys. Um, you are converging bullishly to the upside, okay? RSI, upside, no, no signs of being uh, oversold or bearish divergence. Looks like you had a downsloping uh, trend line here, which you have broken out and regarded as support and price action continuation to the upside. Looks like you're developing a bit of a, a bit of a uh, inverse head and shoulders esque structure. Where you have a uh, low on price, lower low on price, slightly higher on price, okay? This would create some kind of dragon-esque torso, right? Where we have very discernible, very discernible torso area that we're butting up against, okay? So, yeah, guys, um, you need to get above this. You need to get above this area and regard it as support. And if so, you can see definite price action continuation to the upside here. Looks like a FIB 786-886 area would be in that zone. So that would be a nice area of interest from here. Okay. Um, potential shark, Cypher-esque. XABCD, Cypher, 786. Okay, Cypher is where I would go here. Cypher, right there, layer out, right there. Let me mark the levels, so you guys can see. And yeah, that is RSR. Next area of interest, 10 cents, 11 cents, RSR. All right, back to BTC, above 58. Um, yeah, looks really good. Uh, golden zone, we have hit the 618, top of the golden zone. Golden ratio has been hit, golden zone, here to here. Got into it, regarded the golden zone as support, hit the top of the golden zone. Okay, golden retrace zone. 618 has been hit. Uh, next area of interest, 786, 886 areas, uh, 60K, 62K, 63K. Let's get back in the 60K areas on Bitcoin. All right, guys, uh, hope you enjoyed the stream. That pretty much got me pretty spent there. I uh, hope everything went smooth with the PC. I got to figure out how to implement some of my um, my Pepe's back in. They're all on my Mac, so it's kind of hard for me to cross them over, it appears. But uh, yeah, uh, new PC, no fan noise, and it appears we got a little bit of music. So yeah, catch you guys back in the Discord. Have a good evening, everybody. Ducks out.